Okay, welcome everyone. I'm uh, going to start a new series today. Uh, I've been recently learning a new programming language called Rust. Some of you will have heard of it. It was a language that was developed originally by Mozilla. It's an open source project though. It's a low level systems language, but it's, uh, it's surprisingly nice to write in. It gives you some high level primitives uh, and it's, um, it's super fast. So the idea of uh, one of the key objectives of Rust is that it has uh, zero cost abstractions. So, um, so the idea is that uh, even writing in a high level uh, you shouldn't be incurring any performance uh, penalties. So Rust, I think, is an interesting language. Um, but instead of just learning the language in isolation, I've thought about a, an application. Uh, so I always like to learn something and apply those skills as I'm learning rather than just learn a, a new language in isolation. Uh, and I think that'll inform a different way of uh, approaching the language and um, it'll just be a pragmatic way of actually getting stuff done and seeing progress. So, uh, so the language is Rust. Uh, and then the application I've chosen is to understand and process a very common data format used in astronomy. So one of my uh, other passions is, is astronomy. I studied at university uh, and I, I spend a fair bit of time doing amateur astronomy. And I have a telescope and I can record uh, images through, uh, through a fairly nice um, CCD camera attached to that telescope. Uh, and so what I wanted to do is take uh, the data that comes out of, the, out of those, those um, imaging um, applications uh, and then start understanding that and uh, interrogating, inspecting, parsing, processing that data. The, the image format itself is called FITS. Uh, so uh, FITS was originally uh, developed by NASA, I believe. It stands for Flexible Image Transport System. It's uh, commonly used in astronomy. Uh, it's, it's a fairly extensible file format or data format. It's pretty old school though. Uh, you probably wouldn't go, uh, you wouldn't write a, a, a data format like FITS today. It makes some interesting assumptions about uh, length of data, but it, it, I mean, it, it does do a nice job of being extensible. And so we're going we're gonna to understand this file format. We're going to uh, approach it uh, by writing some Rust code to uh, in, uh, effectively parse and process some example images. Uh, and then the idea is that we will eventually have a, a sort of a simple set of command line tools that can uh, display images, interrogate uh, metadata inside of these, these data files and so on. Um, but there is a larger objective here and I, I won't go into it so much today, but um, alluding back to my previous comment about being an uh, amateur astronomy nut, I would love to get to a point where I could build an entire image processing pipeline. Uh, so capturing from light on, on in telescope uh, to, to camera, through to downstream processing of that, that data uh, and capturing that um, and, and processing that in Rust code that I've written. And so what we're going to do though is, is take a fairly structured approach. So I've thought about how I would break this down uh, into logical steps when I want to learn this stuff. Uh, and so I'd love feedback on this, but basically we're going to, um, we're going to start with sort of an intro to some of the, um, some of the Rust that we will use. I'm not going to do this all up front. I'm not going to make this about uh, the theory of Rust. I'm assuming that many of you have programmed before. I'm not going to try and teach you the basics of programming. I'll, I'll assume that you understand what object-oriented programming is. Maybe you've had some exposure to functional languages like um, Haskell or Scala. And, I, and I'm not going to tell you what you know control flow is and looping and um, closures and structs and enums and things like that. But what I will do is map that to what, how Rust thinks about it. So we'll cover the, um, the, the build and package system called Cargo. We'll cover Rust up, which is a way of bootstrapping your, your Rust uh, execution environment. We will cover functions can flow, control flow and looping, structs and method dispatch and ums, uh, parameterizing and ums and, and structs. So there is the concept of generics in Rust, which is quite interesting. Uh, look at how Rust does basic error handling uh, there's also some built-in uh, capability for testing and benchmarking in Rust, which is particularly nice. So we'll get that in there early from, from the start. Uh, and then some more advanced ideas around concurrency primitives, um, message passing using channels, um, and then going to some of the standard library functions that we'll be interested in using, you know, particularly file handling and what have you. So we're not going to cover all of that up front. This is some of the, uh, some, some of the Rust concepts we'll cover throughout the series. Uh, what we will start with, though, is Cargo and, and Rust up, uh, and um, and then we'll quickly move into things like parsing. So this is simple file handling. How do you uh, how do you start opening and and um, and 
reading files, um, building a very basic parser um, to to understand what uh, a FITS version 4 um, spec file looks like. Um, this includes parsing headers and, uh, and, and sort of data, uh, data parts of the file. And then we'll move into more advanced um, or intermediate and advanced functionality around parsing. So inspecting the headers, pulling data out of the headers, returning more metadata about, uh, about the, the file that's stored in those headers and so on. And then the next kind of main phase will be displaying FITS files. So using um, maybe some cross-platform libraries in Rust to provide a, a very simple sort of GUI. Um, that can then render both the, the header information and the metadata, but also any binary um, assets like images that might be stored in those FITS files. Uh, and so we'll, we'll have a go at building a, a, a pretty simple sort of uh, uh, GUI that will let us view and, and inspect uh, FITS files. Then the next sort of major section I thought would be interesting is to go through benchmarking. So one of the advantages of Rust, of course, is it's, it's super fast. Uh, it, it compiles to, to native binary code using LLVM on, on your platform of choice. And so it, um, it does claim to be as fast as C, or at least that's the, the aspiration. Uh, and so we're going we're gonna to put that to the test. Um, we're not necessarily going to benchmark against some of the, uh, the existing C libraries that manage fits right now, but uh, we will look and, and sort of start building some benchmarking around our code. Uh, we might look at comparing it to AstroPy, which is a, a fairly common uh, Python library that does also understand how to uh, how to how to work with FITS files too, and then we'll think about how to make our code go faster. Um, the next sort of section will be about processing and updating. So the first section is all about you know parsing and displaying, um, and then some sort of speed optimizations. But then processing and updating is going to be the next one. How do we update existing FITS files? How do we create new ones? And then uh, right at the end, uh, and, and of course we may change this as we go, but right at the end, I'd like to cover some more advanced topics. And so this is you know, around, um, can we parallelize or turn some of the code into um, uh, concurrent uh, Rust so that it does the, these things faster? Perhaps there's really obvious, embarrassingly parallel tasks like processing multiple data blobs inside of a FITS file that we could perhaps, perhaps do from multiple threads. Uh, I don't know yet, but we'll look into that. So some of the more naive uh, parallelization opportunities. And then um, looking at handling FITS files that don't just fit into memory, so memory mapping. Um, FITS is a, a format used to store very, very large files um, and perhaps more than your system memory can, uh, can handle. So uh, that's one idea. And then working with compress compressed FITS files too, and then maybe some simple validation. That's going to get a lot more uh, ambitious though to get down towards the the validation uh, side of things uh, because there is quite a, a robust spec um, for, for what FITS, FITS looks like. So anyway, that's, um, that's it at a very high level. I've created a, a GitHub repo um, and so you're all welcome to, to play along. Um, so this is, this is uh, FITS Rust. Um, I'll post a, a link to, um, to, to this GitHub repo in, in the description. Uh, and all, all it contains at the moment is a readme um, in Markdown, which contains, you know, basically already has what I've, what I've just described. So, uh, so if that's of interest to you guys, um, please, you know, join it, join in. I'd love to, um, I'd love to learn with you. Uh, be gentle. I'm, uh, I'm very, very new to Rust. I'm a complete newbie, complete beginner. I have programmed a lot in other languages over, over many years in my career. Uh, and I have, uh, have exposure to different paradigms um, in terms of functional as well as OO, as well as just you know more traditional imperative languages uh, like C. Uh, and so anyway, um, be gentle, but um, but also give me ideas about what you'd like to see and how we can improve this. Uh, and so the next uh, next video will start off actually uh, understanding a little bit about Rust and looking at cargo and getting started with some simple file handling in Rust. So thanks a lot, and uh, hope to see you uh, along the journey. Thanks.